Welcome to Learning DSLR Back to Basics. My name is Phil Dame. In this episode, episode 8, I'm going to be covering off the topics of Flash and all the basics about Flash. That includes Flash duration, maximum Flash sync speed, high speed sync, and TTL Flash. The first thing to consider when uh, learning about Flash is about the nature of Flash as a light and as it relates to the duration of that light. Ambient light, uh, which is any kind of continuous light around you, of course has a long duration. And a flash is a burst of light, and it's an instant kind of discharge of that energy. And for the speed lights that you put on your camera, they're often very, very fast bursts. You're talking about a one one thousandth of a second or faster, even as fast as a one fifty thousandth of a second. So very, very fast, fast, rapid bursts of light. And that's important to know as we go through uh, the understanding of exactly how flash works uh, in combination with your camera. And speaking of your camera, it's very important to understand how the shutter mechanism works because that's going to impact your flash exposures. Most DSLR cameras come with what is known as a focal plane shutter. And there's some terminology here that I'm going to explain that, that's going to make sense as you learn about some of the flash options. You're going to see this terminology in those flash options. The way a focal plane shutter works is that it's made up of um, material or plastic that moves out of the way to expose the sensor to light coming into the camera and then of course it has to close to stop that flow of light. And the way it does it is, is not perhaps the way you think it, it might work. It's, what it's composed of is what's called a curtain and there's a curtain that pulls down and effectively reveals uh, or opens the, the opening to let the light in and that's called the first curtain and that moves down out of the way as you saw there. And then there is a second curtain that drops down and closes that opening. So you have the first curtain that opens and then the certain second curtain that follows. What's interesting about the way shutters work is that they can't physically move fast enough to reach the high shutter speeds that are advertised with your DSLR. How can something move so fast as to only expose that opening for one eight thousandth of a second? And the way it does that is a, is a nice bit of kind of trickery is that the second sh curtain will close before the first curtain is open, thus kind of creating a strip that exposes the sensor very, very briefly and it looks a bit like this. So the first curtain goes and the second curtain follows and so almost like a beam of light crosses the, the sensor so that any part of the sensor is only exposed to the light for an eight thousandth of a second. And I'll show you where the impact of this is uh, when we uh, do some examples with flash. So here we are in a situation, let's just pretend the, the, the flash is off camera, but the flash of course could be on the camera. And uh, the first curtain opens, the flash is going to fire, and it's going to do so very, very quickly. And you'll notice that it's doing it while the shutter is completely open. So the entire rectangle is there and exposed, the flash hits the subject, registers on the sensor, and then the flash stops and the shutter closes and you get a well exposed photo. Now that time, that um, kind of minimum amount of time for the shutter to be open before the second shutter closes is a function of what your camera can handle. So if it can open that shutter fully before closing it and do that in two hundredths of a second, then that's considered the max flash sync speed, sometimes also called an X sync speed. And usually it's just a sh the short form is the, the sync speed. So you would say the sync speed of my camera is one two hundredth of a second. Some cameras like the Canon 7D is one two hundred and fiftieth of a second. And you want a very fast sync speed because you're going to be able to freeze the action. Even though the burst of light is, is fast, you are letting in the ambient light for two hundredths of a second. And so the faster it is, the more likely you're going to freeze everything in the frame. So if you say, well, that isn't fast enough. I've got someone jumping in the air and I want to freeze them in action. And I would like to uh, shoot instead at a 500th of a second. This is what's going to happen. You're, the flash is going to end up firing before the actual shutter is fully open because the second curtain is following so quickly. 
and then you end up with a photo where you have bands in it. This is just a representation, it may not look quite like this, but you have only part of the photo that is illuminated because the flash fired so quickly that, um, and the shutter had moved so, um, the curtains had moved so quickly to as never really leave the, sh the, the, um, the uh, sensor fully exposed that you're not gonna get an even illumination on that photo. So what flash developers have created is what's called high speed sync. And it overcomes this by actually shooting rapid bursts of light the entire time. So in effect, the flash almost starts just the moment before the exposure begins. And then as this slit of opening uh, travels across the sensor, the light is bursting on and uh, very, very quickly. And again, it only has to do this for a short duration. And then in effect, you'll finally get that well exposed photo. And so high speed sync is something that you choose either on the back of the flash or in your flash menu on your camera. And that's great because you can now bring your, uh, use your camera at the highest of its shutter speed. So I could actually use flash at one eight thousandth of a second uh, because it's gonna be bursting the entire time again that those two curtains are traveling across the sensor. Um, the only downside of high speed sync is that this constant bursting doesn't let the flash be its most powerful. So you're gonna lose a stop or two of total uh, power of light. So it's gonna be about half as powerful as it, as it, as it could be at its maximum uh, sync speed. Now TTL flash is an interesting concept and I'm gonna contrast this to manual flash. When you have put your flash in manual mode, you're, you're telling your flash exactly how to fire. Every flash has a different kind of power level. It's called its guide number, which I'm not gonna get into here, but you might say to your flash, fire at full strength, or fly, fire at half strength, all the way down to something like 128th of your full strength. And it fires at exactly that strength when you press the shutter, and it's very consistent. But you have to do the work to figure out what is the correct strength relative to my subject and the distance from the subject uh, for, the, for the flash and so on. TTL takes a lot of the work and arithmetic out of the equation by doing what's called a pre-flash. And what a pre-flash does is it fires a little bit of light right before the real exposure, which of course bounces off the subject, goes into the lens of your camera, and your camera's light meter works to say to the flash, hey, that was uh, the, the right amount of light, or I need more or less, and it makes an instant decision. So that's transmitted to the flash, usually seated right on your camera, but it can be done by cable and wireless modes as well, and says now here's the correct flash power. And it might on the fly say, I need a quarter power, and then it will shoot the appropriate amount of light. And so TTL flash is a very valuable part of flash exposure, and it's just kind of good to know this concept of the pre-flash and how your camera is communicating with it, which is why TTL tends to be very specific to the camera makes and models. That's it. I hope you uh, got a, at least a quick overview of some flash basics. Uh, and if you have any questions, be sure to connect with me on my blog if you haven't done so already at learningdslr.com. And I'm on the social web on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks.